<laughs> and um, so my name is Cassidy. I am the communications and program manager at the Goethe Center of Atlanta. And I worked there for a little over two years. Um, and we also offer language classes and support for students and, uh, wanting to maybe study abroad or study in Germany and also German educators across the Southeastern United States. Uh, and like I just said, this event is being recorded. We're going to post it to our YouTube channel um, earlier next week. So if you have any friends who weren't able to register or weren't able to attend during this time, they can always watch it later on and make the Kaiser space the, themselves to, ha um, to have at home. And uh, you'll also be receiving a follow-up email with a link to it. And again, the uh, recipe as a Word document so that you have it forever and ever. Uh, with all that being said, I'll hand it over to our wonderful host, Melissa Zimmermann. <laughs> Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yeah, as already said, my name is Melissa and I'm really excited for all of you to be here today and hopefully some of you are also motivated to actually cook um, the same time as I do right here. And um, I've been in the US for a little over five years now and I always had a big passion for cooking, especially also baking and then Last year I decided um, that I'm gonna go and do the culinary program at the um, Kennesaw State University and um, it's an amazing program. I think Chef Robot might also be here listening today. Um, so everyone that is interested should definitely do that. I had the pleasure to work in some really amazing restaurants as well and just learned a lot about cooking itself, just the whole industry and I'm really excited today to try to teach you one of my favorite uh, dishes from at home. It just always makes me feel like I'm at home. It's more a dish, especially for this time of the year. Um, it's called Käsespätze. And Käsespätze is basically means uh, cheese spätzle, spätzle, which is a certain egg pasta, which we're gonna make really easy actually. And it's more famous in the southern regions of uh, Germany and also in Austria and Switzerland. And depending on in which region you're gonna eat it, it's just a little bit different. It's either the size of the spetsa that's a little different. I'm gonna show you two different variations today. Or it's also the cheese that is different because obviously, depending if you are in Germany or if you are in Switzerland or Austria, you just find different cheese available. And I'm just going to show you also what kind of cheese you can find here in local grocery stores. So this is all very easy for you guys to make at home. And um, I'm also going to throw in a few just general um, cooking tips and tricks that I learned um, during my program and they really, really helped me as well. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions, like Cassidy said, um, put on your microphone or put them in the chat and then we can just go over them. And should you not see anything that I'm showing also or you don't hear me, just let me know. Um, all right, so we are gonna start. And in general, whether you are cooking or baking, you always want to start with your mise en place. I hope you can see that. Drawing in some French here as well. Bonjour, I'm a grand man <laughs> um, they, That basically means put in place. So you always want to start to put all your ingredients together and measure them so that you are just ready to go. So what we are gonna need today is we need some flour. I have a really big pack here and for cooking or more for baking, I always recommend to have an actual kitchen scale that also has a metric um, system on there because the thing is, it's just much more accurate than using cups because everyone is going to measure a cup differently. So you probably know when you take a cup and you put it in your flour and some people have a big hump on there, some other people it's like a little lower. So you're not, you're never going to have the same level of flour and especially with baking that's really important um with the spectrum today it's not that important because you can still kind of wing it but just when you're baking cakes it's much much better um but today we are gonna need about 250 grams of all-purpose flour Right. 
gonna put that in the bowl. And then we are gonna need three eggs. I always like to use uh, organic brown eggs. And we are gonna need some water, about 250 milliliters, and it should be lukewarm, so I'm gonna warm it up a little bit in a second. We are gonna need some salt, a very, very important element for cooking. Um, I think most of us, we are always putting a little too less salt in our dishes because we are a little scared of it, but um, I learned that um, you really need some salt to have some good taste. Um, and then we also gonna need some butter. So with the spätzle, um, you can either to make the dough use really a simple a wooden spoon and mix it yourself, have a little arm workout right included. Or if you have a kitchen aid, um, and that has a dough hook, you can also use that. A little tip, never buy yourself a black kitchen aid like I do because you see every little crumb of flour. Um, or what you can also do is you have a little hand mixer that has the dough hooks. And somehow I realized that in the US you don't find a lot of them that have the dough hooks, but um, there are some out there. I stole actually this one from one of my coworkers. Um, I don't think he remembers, <laughs> but that's okay. Sorry, can I interrupt you for a second? I think the recipe said 50 milliliters water, and now I think I heard you saying 250 yeah, milliliters. you are correct. It's 50. I apologize, but I was just trying to figure out if you're paying attention, but I guess you do. Uh -huh. so I All right, so we're going to have the flour and we're going to add the three eggs to it. And we are going to add about five grams of salt, so you can kind of measure that also in your hand. So it's just like a little crease. All right. And then we are just going to start to mix that together. And I'm going to just do it with the spoon now because I'm not sure how many people have the dough hooks available today. And also one important thing, always try to put your um, refrigerated ingredients out of the fridge about an hour before you start um, using them, especially for baking, because so they can reach room temperature. That's really important um, because they are just gonna be much easier incorporated with the um, dry ingredients and your results are gonna be much more better. And okay, so we have in here the meal and which is the flour and the ayer, which are the eggs. I cannot forget some German words here. And then we're gonna have 50 milliliters. So I'm gonna with some out here and I'm going to heat it up a little. So let's see about 30 seconds. It should not be too hot. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add the water, wasser, slowly to your um, dough because we don't want the dough to be too liquidy. It 
it should result in a dough that's really kind of gooey, and I will show that to you then. And if I'm going too fast, please just let me know so you guys can follow. We might be feeling our arms tomorrow a little bit, but that's fine. And I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but I do have a question and somebody yeah. else had asked on the um, on the chat function, how much water was it? Was it 50 or 250? 50, 50 milliliters. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that it's all nice and incorporated. So it should have a nice and smooth um, look to it. That means that it's all nice and incorporated and mixed together. So you can see kind of really gooey, but that's how we want it. And then we're just gonna scrape up the sides a little bit. And also of the bowl. And now we're going to let this rest just a little bit and we're going to um, do the crispy onions in the meantime because so the dough should sit just a little bit so the gluten can develop and I would just recommend you can either just put a towel over the um, dough or just a little bit of uh, plastic foil. does not have to be super tight and we're just going to put it to the side a little bit. All right, I guess that was pretty simple. And just like that you have your Spätzle type. So I always like to make um, the crispy onions myself because um, you just know what's in it and it's just nice and fresh. Usually you should probably make them a day ahead because then they really um, dry out and are nice and crispy, but we can just do them today um, right here and there. And for that, you're just going to need one um, zebra, a white onion, and the most important kitchen tool, the knife. Um, I know, or it's called Messer in German. I know, pe I know a lot of people are probably intimidated by um, using a big knife. I was too, until I um, went into culinary school and I did not have another choice. <laughs> um, and I have to say, it's really changed um, my life on how you know you, you use it in the kitchen and you will never go back to use a little small knife. And also, it's much more dangerous to have a dull knife 
than to have an actual sharp knife because it's just so much easier to like slip if you have a dull knife. So a sharp knife is really what you want to have. So really try to invest in a good knife and um, it will make everything so much more easy and fun. And also, I know probably a lot of people don't like to cut onions because you start um, crying um, when you have a lot of uh, Kleenex around you or some people I know they even wear some goggles. Um, but honestly, if you have a sharp um, knife, then you will notice that you're not going to cry anymore because with a sharp knife, you're not going to release the um, juices of the onion. So that's what makes you cry. So if you have a sharp knife, they are not going to come out because your knife is going to slide through and you're not going to have to cry. So no more crying in the kitchen. So we are just going to... Um, have the onion. So we have just two halves here. And you want to cut off the one side. And then we're just going to peel off the first or the first two layers, depends on how your onion looks like. So when you cut your onion, you always want to leave on, I hope you can see this, the side where there is the, the stump, I think you say, because that will make your onion stay together and it makes it a lot easier for you to cook, uh, to cut the onion. And the other side, you just cut off and you peel off the first two layers. Alrighty, and then you're just gonna have a little bowl. And we are just gonna cut the onions in like really thin stripes. into the bowl. Try to separate them a little bit already. And we're going to do the other one as well. Obviously, if you don't like onions, then you don't have to make the crispy onions. And of course, you can also always buy them. But it's just really quick and easy to make yourself some crispy onions. All right. Then we're separating just all of them. In the meantime, we can already heat up a pan. I chose to use, um, one second, but make sure that you guys can see that. I chose to use a skillet today because with a skillet, you can just um, use high heat. Um, and I think then also for the spetsa, that's just a nice um, way to, to do them. Um, I'm gonna heat that up to about medium heat. And let this just heat up. And in the meantime, I'm going to use another bowl. And we're going to need some more flour again. And you're just going to add a few spoons of flour in there. That's just to coat the onions. So it's not really important how much it's going to be. It just needs to be enough. All right. So I just put a little layer of meal in here. Okay. 
And then we want to add some more salt, just another little crease. And then what I also like to use for the crispy onions is some paprika powder. And you can also, I know here in the US, I'm gonna show this a little. Um, in the US, you also find some smoked paprika powder sometimes. That's also really good to use. So you can just add like a teaspoon or two teaspoons, depends on how much you like paprika powder. But it just gives it a nice little touch of flavor. So you put this on top of your flour. And then we are just gonna mix it around. So that the salt, the flour and the paprika powder are nice and mixed. And then we wanna coat our onions. So I'm just gonna spoon some of the mixture over the flowers, uh, over the onions. And then just mix them around. And then you can kind of see, so you want them to be nicely covered. Take a little more. when you fry something to use clarified butter or um, G, which is the same, but um, I'm just using regular butter today. And also, so one thing I noticed in the US is that when you buy the regular butter sticks that you find in every grocery store, I always wondered why is there, when you cut it open, there's like a little outside the, around the butter that just looked darker than the actual butter. And I always wondered what that was. And then I read about it and I think that they either add some water or they freeze the butter beforehand. So I started to buy some different butter. Um, it's called Lucra butter. They have it at Publix, um, probably also some other stores, but it's just um, the really the high fat regular butter. And you can see when you open it and you compare it to your butter sticks that there is a huge difference because you won't find this, find this color difference. And I just noticed, especially for baking, it just um, gives you different results. And also, um, if you don't find the blue crab butter, you can find the um, uh, Kerrygold. That's also just a really good butter. So once our pan is hot, we want to use some butter and in this case you can use a little more so I'm going to start with that much because you want the onions then to be really covered so you can fry them. So just medium heat should be fine, maybe even a little lower, depends on your stove. Just let the butter melt. I'm not going to turn on my fan today, so it's going to be a little smoky in here maybe, but that's okay. And then... Depending on the size of your pan, you want to add a little more butter or not. Um, I'm going to see if I need more once I put the onions in. So now it's melted, so we're just going to add 
for the onions in here. Yeah, I might eat a little bit more butter. Butter is actually a really easy word in German. It's called Butter. So that should be an easy one for you. And then we are just gonna let them do their thing and get crispy. Hey, Melissa, in the chat, there's a question about how much butter exactly you're using. The recipe doesn't have an amount listed. Yeah, I just, that's just, you need to kind of wing it because it depends the size of your pan. So you really want a nice coat of butter in your pan. So I used to probably, if you look at, if you have the sticks, it's probably almost one stick of butter. Um, because you just want to make sure, and I can hold the pan up high in a little bit, that it's, you know, imagine you're frying something like when they do wings or um, fried in the restaurant and they really put it all the way down into the hot oil. So you really want it to be covered because otherwise they won't get crispy. So I should probably use a little bit more, but you can see it's like, it's like nicely covered. So they actually really fry in a nice way. So the difference between cooking and baking is that baking is really a lot of science and chemics, um, which cooking is as well. But a lot of cooks don't like to bake because with baking, you really need to be accurate with all your measurements. Whereas with cooking, that's really, it's more of an art because, you know, you, you start doing it and you just go with the flow kind of and you just after a while you just know okay i'm gonna need that much butter or i'm gonna need that much oil and um it's just really learning by doing but you cannot i mean you can mess things up of course but um it's a little bit more there's more room than when when you in than when you bake because with baking when you put a little bit too much uh baking soda or baking powder or whatever in um then it's ruined. So <laughs> you can't fix it anymore. With cooking, that's a little different. And I think I saw another um, message in the chat about if I use the white onion, if I saw this correctly, and that's a yes. I use the regular white onion. So you don't want to use the sweet onion, of, of course you can, but I think it's just um, a little nicer with the regular white onions. So we're just gonna let them get a little crispy here. And you will see they will start to turn a little golden at one point. And that's what you want. You just need to be careful that at one point, if your heat is too high, so they might turn um, dark really fast so it just be on the lookout that you don't um over fry them and in the meantime you can prepare a little plate and i like to put a piece of paper towel on it so that later when we take the onions out we can put them on there and then the excess um amount of the butter can just drip down on the on the paper towel so i can see that they're coming together. So in some regions where they um, do the Kirschspätzle, they also add a little bit of bacon in it. Um, that also is a really good dish, um, but you can really kind of play around with what you want, um, what you want to add to them. Okay. 
just going to try to show that in the camera that you can see that they are getting more crispy now, but they are still not there yet, at least not all of them. So maybe this year for Thanksgiving, since in 2020, everything is a little bit different. Um, you can serve Käsespätzle as your side instead of mac and cheese. You can impress your family a little bit. <laughs> Another question from the chat, Melissa. If you were to make the onions in advance so that they stay drier, would you want to keep them in the refrigerator or keep them out at room temperature? Um, that's a good question. I would probably put them in the fridge. Not entirely sure, to be honest, but I think I would. Although, no, you know what? I think you don't need to. I think you can put them in like a, like a mason jar or something, something that closes nicely, because I think once you um, fry them, they will stay good for a while. Um, but I can, I can look that up afterwards and let you know as well. OK, I think mine are about to be done. Getting really crispy here. And also, of course, when you have any questions afterwards, whenever you make the dish, you can send me a message on Instagram or so, and I will be happy to, um, to help. Did you cook all of your onions at one time, or did you split it? I split it, so I only use one for this for the fried onions, and the rest we're gonna use later in the actual uh, case of the dish. Okay, but they're all in the flour. No, I have I only cut one and put it in the flour, and I have two more onions here. Okay, but the of the cut ones, you did all those at the yes. same time. Okay. Yes. So you can see here, some of them are a little bit more crispy than others, but you just want them to be like um, a nice golden brown. And then just let them sit on the paper towel, maybe separate them a little bit. And then they can just Sit until later. All right. Should I wait a little bit until you guys are um, maybe done with the crispy onions? I'm not sure how far you are, but I don't want to go ahead with the dough before you guys are done. Yeah, I was going to say, if anyone who's cooking along, maybe you can give us a progress report. If I saw a lot of people uh, questioning or asking about the dough, how stiff it needs to be. I think some people needed to add a little bit more flour. Okay, so yeah, what we, have been we can do that. Your challenges so far, or maybe if you want to show us anything you have so far, yeah. go right ahead. They might be busy with their onions right now. <laughs> Okay. 
Uh, Melissa, I'm not sure if you want to go on uh, gallery view. A few people were showing their dough. Maybe they can show oh, it again yeah. for you so you can see everybody. I think Dagmar showed hers and Carolyn as well. Oh, I see a lot of things here. <laughs> can I click on people's pictures? This is the dough and this is the onions. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, really? A lot of people are cooking. Nice. I think if you click on them and select spotlight video, yeah. it'll make them bigger. Now I can see. Okay. Good. Should we go on or should I wait? Now my... I'm seeing some head nodding. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think that means we can continue on to the next steps. Okay. You unmuted. Can we see your dough real quick? Yeah, I'm going to show it in a second. All right. So I just took it and it, it's pretty stiff if you can see that so I might add a little bit more water yeah it's really stiff see that so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water A few more questions, Melissa. Uh, Christina is asking, is this, is it the case with this recipe that you should beat the dough till it forms bubbles? Um, mine does not form bubbles, I think, but I think you have a lot of strength in your arms when you form bubbles. Um, I mean, there are some small, some small bubbles. So I don't think, I don't think it matters that much, to be honest. Um, I think it just needed to be a nice incorporated dough, but you really cannot do much wrong with it, to be honest. Even if your dough is going to end up being a little stiffer or um, a little more runny in the end, you will see once we put the spatula in the water, um, if they form the way you want them to form. But it really does not, it's not a deal breaker if the dough is a little bit more stiff or a little bit more runny. It might just be easier to use it um, depending on how it, you know, how it's going to feel and what tools you are using. So I'm going to show it to you in a second. So yeah, mine is, it's still kind of gooey, but it's a little looser now. If ours is more runny than that, should we add flour and incorporate it in? Yeah, you can add a little bit more flour, no problem. It's really, after you've done it a while, you kind of get a feel for it, but um, yeah, you, we just want to make sure it's not, it's not too runny um, because then it's going to be hard to cut the specs in. In the, mean, in the meantime, I'm going to use a brush. And I'm going to fill it up with water. Just about like three quarters full. So you don't want it to be too high because we want to bring it to a boil. So I'm just going to put this on high and let it sit there a little while. Um, so with spatula, there are very, there are many different ways on how to do them. And it also, 
that's where it also comes to the different regions and how the form of the spectra is and how they are going to make them. So I'm going to show you um, two different methods today. So this is a Spätzle in German, a Spätzle maker. You can get this on Amazon. I actually just got this. So this is the first try that we're going to do with that today. Um, but you can see it has little holes. And there are different ones. There are also some that are more like rounds. And in this case, you're going to fill the dough into here. And you're just going to go like this. And it will cut you some spectra. And they are more, they're smaller. Um, then you have another one that has also the holes. And it's more, it's like a half moon that you're going to put on the pot. And then there is like a little um, spatula with it. And you're just going to literally just scrape the dough over it. And then the spatula will fall through. So you can really use anything that has like holes in it um, and then use it for the dough to put over and cut the spatula into the pot. But um, another way is also, it's um, called a spätzle brett. It's literally set that on here. And you can also find this on Amazon. It's literally just a little wooden board and you can use really any little board that you have. It doesn't even have to be um, wooden. So if you don't have that today, you can just use another small board that you have. And with this method, you're going to put the dough on the board and then you're going to cut either that actually came with the um, spätzle bread that's like a little, a little special. And you're going to cut the dough into the water. Now with this one, you're going to get a lot bigger spätzle. Um, what I like to do when I do case spätzle, I'm going to always use a spätzle maker because I just like them when they are like little, more like little knots and, you know, it's just easier to eat because when you eat the spätzle, you probably serve them the cage spätzle, you serve them in like a little skillet or on a plate and you have the cheese and the sauteed onions in there and then it's just nice to eat. But when I make goulash um, or anything else, then I like to use um, the board because then you're going to have really the nice long thicker spatula, sometimes a little too big, <laughs> because they really just with the water, they just get kind of, they a little bit. But I like it better when they are bigger and you have something that, a side dish. Um, it's just, for me, I feel like it's nicer to eat together. And then you can always use the dough that we are making today and use them to make regular spatula, but you would not do what we are going to do today and put them afterwards in a skillet and add the cheese and everything. You're just going to use a spätzle plain and you serve them with a goulash or any other stew and just as a, as a side dish. Um, so you can, you can I, I will show you later how those spätzle will look like. And it's also really a really great dish, especially for this time of the year, although Georgia is not really playing with the seasons. <laughs> But at least in the morning, it's a little cooler now. <clears throat> so we want to bring our water to a boil. Um, so we have a big top and some wasser in it. And then we also going to add some salt. And this is also something where I have never used enough salt, but I learned um, in all the kitchens that I was that um, the water should taste like the ocean. <laughs> so you really want it to, to be um, enough salt. And I think that was just a question. Yeah, right? yes, yeah. Felicia is wondering if the um, to use the spätzle maker device if the dough has to be running enough so that the gravity will pull it through the tiny holes? Um, I'm guessing yes, we're going to see that in a few minutes. Sorry? I said, I'm guessing we're going to see that in a few minutes, but maybe if you can yes. explain it a little bit. 
Yeah, but it also should not be too runny because you're going to use this tool to kind of scrape the dough back and forth. So with that, it will go through and cut through. So it should be fine. Um, you definitely don't want it to be runny because then you could literally just put the, the dough on it and it would go through. That's not what you want. You want it to be a little um, like stiff and gooey. So mine looks like this right now. So you see it has a nice like it stretches, but it kind of sticks together. That's what you want. <clears throat> okay, so the water is boiling. I think there's another one. I added more water. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So it's better when I put this light on, probably not. Um, and I'm gonna try to bring it uh, a little closer to you guys so you can see it. I'm just gonna mix the water through. So what you want is something where you, so once you put the dough in, the spätzle, when they are done, they're gonna float up. And you want something where you can take them out of the water. So I'm having this little thingy right here that has the holes in it, but you can literally also take, um, let's see. <clears throat> If you have like a smaller seat, you can use this. Um, you can just use a spoon and just fish them out. And if there's a little water on it, that really doesn't matter. And then, um, so I have from Tupperware, it's a Spätzle box <laughs> that exists in Germany. Um, it's, it's a box and you have this inner box in here that has some tiny holes in it so that the water can run through. But I know some people, they also, once they take out the spätzle out of the hot water, they're going to put it in a bowl with cold water um, because they're going to stick a little together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them in here and I'm going to put a little bit of cold water over it so they're not just going to be that sticky. Okay. So you have the water boiling. Um, you don't want it to be like completely crazy where the water is gonna, you know, overflow. Sometimes I like to have a little bit of water, cold water next to me that if the water um, comes up because it's boiling, then I can just add a little bit of cold water in it and it will calm down the water a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna try to show it to you. So I'm just going to add about a spoon of the dough. And now we're just going to see if the consistency of the dough is fine. And now I'm just going to go and scrape over it. And then you will see that the specs that are going to fall through. There's also a question about you if you're using a board and a knife, Melissa. Do you have to use a very sharp knife, or what type of knife? No, do you in this case, you can use a dull knife. I'm gonna. That's something I was about to say. I'm gonna show you the method with the board in a second. So in this case, you're just gonna go back and forth and scrape the dough over the spatula maker, and then usually. Some of them hang around, so you can just scrape them off. And put this to the side. And you see already that they are just gonna come and float up. And those now are really like little, little tiny spetsler, which is totally fine. And then once they are floating, it's gonna wait until all of them are floating. <clears throat> And if your water boils too much, you can just lower it a little bit. And then you're just gonna take them out and I'm gonna show it to you. Wait. <laughs> so here you will see those are 
the little spectra. And I'm just gonna put them in here. And you're just gonna take them all out. And you don't wanna use too much dough um, at, the, at one time. So rather take your time and do it in several steps, especially when you're doing it the first few times, just makes it easier too. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it with the board. And so you can just take another knife. Um, this is not a sharp knife. You don't need a sharp knife. You can take a spatula, whatever you have, just something where you can then really cut it off. So what you want to do is you want to put the, the board, you want to wet it just a little bit. Which just makes it a little easier. And then you're gonna take your dough and also just add a spoonful. I think I might add, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit more water in my dough. That's it's really something you need to play around with. Um, what works for you. You're going to use your board with it a little bit and you're going to take a spoon of dough and maybe try to not use too much at the beginning it's just a little easier and then you're going to take your knife or spatula what you have you're going to wet it a little bit and you're going to just spread the the dough on your board, make it nice and smooth. And then you are just gonna, and that's really now your preference, how big you're gonna cut the dough into the water, but I'm gonna tell you they're probably gonna get a lot bigger than you think. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut them in there. You can make them thin, you can make them bigger. It's really a personal preference and also what's easier for you. I'm going to turn up my water a little bit. And then you can see that step by step, the spatula will come and float on top of the water. How long does it need to cook? Really just until they float on top. Okay. That's about it. Oops, that last one. And you can just leave them on on top um, until the, the last ones float up. That's totally fine. That's usually what I do. So I just leave them in the pot and then they will come up one by one. And once they float, they are good to go. And I want to see some of your spatulas, please. Uh, 
Uh, and Roger's asking if you should keep the water boiling the whole time the Kaiser Space is cooking in the water or if you have to turn down the heat at any time. No, it should still always boil. Um, not like crazy, but it should boil. So you can see there's a lot of steam coming up and a lot of um, bubbles. So it's really, um, I can, I'm not sure how long it will last, but it's really, it's probably going to steam up. Well, yeah, but it's, it's boiling. So, so I have my stove set, for example, on like six and a half, seven, not the highest, but also you still want it to go. And now you can see. Does it matter if you don't get all of them out when you're digging them out? Not all at once. You okay, like when you add more, it doesn't matter if you've got all of it out or does it? No, I mean, after after they all float up, then you can take them out step by step. Okay. And now you see that they are just much longer now and not like small little steps. So why are those longer and not small? Because I cut them off the board. Okay, okay. So mine are really small and hard to get out. <laughs> That's why I was asking. <laughs> did you use the board or did you use a spatula maker? Um, a cheese grater. Yeah, I can imagine that they are smaller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that too, it's a very good creative thinking there. I like that. I mean, honestly, you can also maybe leave them in, do another round, and then just um, pour them all over a, um, a bigger um, seat. So, you know, that you just, but then you would throw out the whole water. So, um, but it, would not, it wouldn't matter if they are a little longer in the water and if it's easier for you then to get them out. Or do you maybe have one that's really um, like fine? Then I think you should get them out also a little easier. Um, yeah, so let me know how it goes. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the other ones in. Can get a little messy sometimes, but that's fine. That's the fun. I definitely know the first time when I cut them with a board, my spatula were huge. <laughs> yes, that's actually what Sarah Riches is saying. Yeah. Uh, they're coming out in really big clumps. Is there any way to make them nicer and smaller by using the spatula press? Um, they are coming out in clumps of the press or with the board? With the spatula press, she said. Um. What consistency is the dough? Is it like really runny or is it? Um, it's pretty dry. Maybe try add, to add a little bit more water. And Dagmar is asking, they're, on, they're finishing up their onions now. Can you remind them what, they, what you did when you, uh, when you finished the onions? You just put them on a, pay, on a plate with a napkin over them? Yes, with a paper towel. Just lay them on there. So they can dry out. If the if the lady um where the spectre come out as a lump wants to show them maybe then I can I can take a look.
and it could very well be that you know while you are making your spread for the for the rest of the dough because it's sitting there longer you might just want to add a little bit of water from time to time just to loosen it up a little bit How is everyone doing? Working? Dagmar says her water's not boiling yet. Um, oh. Maybe adding a little <laughs> bit more salt. I know salt is really helpful. And we, I think even Melissa said, trying to make it taste like seawater is good, good measure. Yeah. Barrett says he's doing great. And awesome. Mona, I hope I pronounced that right, is saying that she's probably going to have to make these for Thanksgiving this year. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> And in some regions of Germany, or a lot of times when you go into, I know there are some like European import markets in the US and they sometimes sell the pre-made Spätzle. I honestly never bought them, but um, you will see they are really long and thin. So a lot of, um, like some people, they do the Spätzle, they almost look like, not like spaghetti, but kind of like spaghetti. Um, so you would really put them on the board, like the dough really like flat. And you can go on YouTube actually and find some videos about that. Um, a lot of people do that really fast and they really go and cut them like this thin. And then they are gonna just be long like noodles. But I would definitely recommend that you're gonna do the dough again one time and you're not gonna do the Kehlspätzle, but you're just gonna save, um, serve the Spätzle plain. Or you can use the Spätzle, how we are doing them right now. And um, after taking them out of the water, you're gonna put them in a pan and you put some butter in the pan and you just brown them a little bit. Tastes really good and then you serve them with some goulash or some, um, like my aunt makes on uh, Christmas, she makes some like deer and with a nice dark gravy sauce and that together tastes like really well. And then some, of course, German red cabbage. Um, so they're really different, different ways on how you can serve the Spätzle. I'm going to switch to gallery view a little bit. I want to see 
some people's sweats there. Oh, Felicia, yours look great. <laughs> oh, I see something here. Michiko, am I saying this right? They look really nice. Close. But I'm using a Spätzle maker as well. That's totally fine. <laughs> and here, Barrett, great. Oh, Linda, wow, they look great too. Awesome. Thank you. Dagmar, what's the water doing? Looks like they're busy. That's probably a good thing. It's boiling and we got the first batch. It looks awesome. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't rinse them or anything, or do you? Do you rinse them with cold water? I, I honestly don't. Um, they might be a little bit sticky, but that's not going to matter because we are going to put them in a the pan. So I, I don't. Oh, my last one's got really big too. I'm getting hungry over here. <laughs> That's also what Inez said. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, <laughs> she said she already had to sample a few people, a few pieces and it tasted yeah, great. You should taste them. Go ahead and taste them. I'm gonna do that too in a second. In all honesty, I've never been a big fan of Spätzle. So, I mean, everyone I've had in Germany has not been all that tasty, but I think the salt making it yeah. like ocean water really makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. It does. Most a lot of times we are too flavor. afraid of salt. <laughs> And obviously, whenever you want to make it for more people, you're just gonna um, multiply the recipe and you're gonna have more. Um, actually, in one of the restaurants that I was working um, during the culinary program, in, um, it's called Seed, it's in, um, in Marietta. And we did a German night and I made Spätzle and I think I, I think I made Spätzle out of three kilograms of flour so I made a lot of spreads that night <laughs> but they turned out great okay. I'm just gonna wait a little bit until you guys are mostly done with your spreads then where's your dog Melissa <laughs> uh, she's in the crate <laughs> get some spritzel later then. <laughs> she learned really fast. Um, we just got her like a month ago and she learned really fast where the place to be is at in this house. She always knows when I'm in the kitchen, it's time for her to go there too. So for the next step, we are going to use um, another pan. I'm just going to use the skillet again. And you don't want to pour any hot um, oil or fat into your sink because you're going to get some issues if you do that. All right, so I'm going to taste one of my spits too. Mm -hmm. All right. 
How is everyone doing? Are we ready to go to the next step? Yes. Okay. Well, I am. Say it again. I said I am, but I. Other okay. <laughs> So as the next step, we want to um, saute the onions, the other onions that we have. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why uh-oh? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to keep cutting some onions. Um, I think I'm going to use two. You can obviously use it just to your preference. If you don't like onions, you just can leave out that step. But I really like onions, um, and I think it just makes the whole dish um, just a little bit better. So we can actually start to heat up our pan. Um, you want a big pan because we're going to put in all the specks and also in there. Um, so actually, you know what, before we do that, I'm not sure if you guys bought already grated cheese. I didn't. Um, I honestly oh, hardly ever do. I like to buy the actual like, um, uh, blocks of cheese um, with cheese. I really like to use high quality cheese, and I know in the US it's crazy expensive, unfortunately, to find good cheese. Um, but it's always worth it because literally the cheese is just going to make especially that dish. So um, for today, um, obviously, we need to take what we can find. So I found at Publix, um, I found an Emmentaler which is a great cheese for this dish. And then I'm gonna use a Gruyere, um, but you can use really, I mean, any cheese. It's really what you like as a flavor, but usually the Kirschbetzle, it's some, you know, some, they call it Bergkäse, it's mountain cheese. I think there's a question aside for another day. Yes, yes. you can, yes, you can. You can totally keep the Spätzle. Um, in the fridge and use it one of the next two days. Sometimes they taste even better. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm going to grate my cheese first before we continue. So that I have that ready. And I mean, you can use as much cheese as you like. Um, I'm for sure going to take more than 100 grams because obviously the cheese here makes the dish and who doesn't like cheese? So you just want one that, you know, has a, a good, like almost a spicy taste or you can really mix them around. Um, I usually do um, because not every time I'm finding the same cheese. So I'm just gonna use a little microblame. Please watch your fingers. And I'm gonna grate the cheese. That might be just a sec. What kind of cheese were you guys able to find? Ms. Shiko said she found both of the cheeses that you're using at Walmart. Awesome. I found the same one at Publix. Perfect. And Felicia is using a Swiss and a Gruyter as well. That's awesome. That sounds really good. I mean, honestly, you cannot do a, a lot wrong with cheese. So. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of choices. I'm on a small island with a very tiny grocery store. And so oh, I, have, cool. I have cheddar and, um, and Parmesan. And That's going to taste great too. What, what island are you on? St. George Island in Florida. 
Nice. It's right in the panhandle. It's out in the in the in the yeah. gut. I hope you were all good with the storm. It passed us by. Yeah. It went everywhere but here. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was coming here, but it changed path. That we like that. <laughs> Um, Roger says, your mother says, that's enough cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just has to face it now that I'm going to take all of that. <laughs> and Jennifer also has a tip for everybody that if you buy the bags of grated cheese, they're coated so they don't really melt that well. That's why yeah. she recommends to always grate your own as well. Yeah. And I honestly, I just don't trust the grated cheese so much. <laughs> It's like sometimes it doesn't, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm not sure if it's cheese, but um, yeah, that's why I like to use my own. <laughs> okay, so I did not even turn on my pen yet, but I'm gonna do that now. Just on medium heat, but um, so the pan can get nice and hot. And you always wanna get your pans really nice and hot before you start to put anything in it so you also should not put the um the oil or the butter in it before it's hot you always want to get the pan hot um we're gonna cut the onions and this time we're gonna cut them a little smaller and i'm gonna show you how but i'm gonna wash my hands first and christina is also asking if there's any cheeses One that we... i cannot hear you sorry okay now is there any hard cheeses that would not work for this? No, because literally you make the dish and you can decide how to make it. There's no, obviously if you go into the specific regions in Germany, they will tell you there is only their way and no other way, but that's not what we are doing. So <laughs> um, you can literally play around with the cheese and whatever cheese you like, um, do it. I would always, more use one that has a lot of taste and it's a little like has that spiciness. I don't think like mozzarella would add a lot of flavor to the dish because it's just more plain. Um, yeah, but you can decide. It's your dish and you make the dish. So it's the cook's decision. Um, all right, so we're gonna cut the onion. So you also want to have them again. Let me take some layers off first. And then again, when you cut them, don't take this part off, but you're going to cut off the other side. So you're going to cut that side off, peel it. I'm going to use two. We should be preheating our pan right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. you've done that so we want to really um we want to dice the onions um that not have to be too small because you want to you want to be able to taste the onions in this dish so what i'm going to do i'm going to first take my knife and i'm going to um do one or two cuts like this and then i'm going to go and cut it from top and you can just do the maybe like half inch dices or so, cut those and then you just go ahead and dice them. And my pan 
find this really good, not here. <coughs> so I'm gonna put it in the wrong side. And then you're just gonna do that with all your onion halves. Just want to make sure that they are all kind of the same size. So when we saute them, they are all kind of going to be ready at the same time. Barbara is asking uh, if it's crucial to use another entire onion if you already have the dried onion on top. Did you ask if it's crucial? Yeah, that's what she said. It's not crucial. <laughs> it's a personal preference and it makes the dish nice. <laughs> And then we're gonna take a piece of butter. I'm just gonna start with a small little cube like that. And you want it medium heat, but rather lower. So where's my spatula? I'm gonna, mine is too hot right now, so I'm gonna put it to the side. Because we don't wanna brown the butter. We just want to melt, but usually the skillet gets hot really fast, so I'm going to use a little bit more. And we really want to only saute the onions, so we don't want to get color on them. We want to have them become nice and clear. And then let them caramelize. So melt the butter and then you're gonna put the onions in. So we want to get them kind of um, like light brown so they just start to caramelize a little bit and that will give the dish a little bit of a nice kind of like a sweet flavor. So we don't want to use high heat so just like medium or a little bit below.
And so we are at the 90 minute mark. It's already 2.30, but I think since we waited a little while to make sure everybody had time to join and that we've been going pretty slowly so everybody can keep up, I would guess if Melissa could say uh, from her experience, but that this recipe probably wouldn't take you this long just doing it at home by yourself. Yeah, um, no, not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we're done, so. yeah, and we're not shutting down the Zoom, don't worry. <laughs> we're just, I was just letting yeah. everybody know that <laughs> if you're going to try to make this for an event or anything, you probably don't need it's to plan just this much time. So we're going to finish it out to the end. And yeah, everybody who can stay, please do. Hopefully nobody has to run off before we see the finished product. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can always make the fried onions up front. Um, you can make the feta day ahead, so you can really um, prepare for it. Um, so it won't take you that long. And with a little bit of practice, it will also go a lot faster than And I would hope that you guys can send me some of your pictures afterwards. I want to see how your spectra look like. That would be awesome. Yeah, if any of you guys want to post them on Instagram, you could tag Melissa. She's a oh, underscore yeah. malicious underscore life or the Goethe Centrum, or both of us, the Goethe Centrum also. We're yeah. uh, at Goethe Centrum ATL. We would love to see all of your pictures or just send them to us in an email, of course, also. And we want to know how they taste too. <laughs> So unfortunately, this is a step that we cannot um, make much faster, but should be done soon. Is everyone up to speed? Look a little bit. Looks like it. So most of the time in Germany, when you go to a restaurant and you order the Kirschpätzle, they will um, most usually serve it with like a, um, a small side salad or so, just so you have some greens with it as well. And that's just a really, a really nice dish to balance out then the Kirschpätzle. So my onions are getting there. And then we can add a little bit of salt on the onions, or you can wait until the end to season it. And then you just have your spatula and your cheese close by because we're going to put them in step by step so that the cheese melts nicely around all the spatula. Yeah. 
think my onions are good to go. I'm gonna show it into the camera really quick. But my skill is a little hot. So they are like just a little bit golden brown. And usually you can leave them in there a little longer, but because of timing, it might look good. So I'm gonna, and now you, your spatula might be a little sticky, but that's not an issue. It's just gonna put them in. You can put them in step by step. Put in some of the cheese. And just let the cheese melt nicely around the spatula. Put the remaining spatula in. And some more cheese. Obviously, as much as you like. And you already put all of your cheese in? Um, not yet. Oh, okay. but it's really how much you how much you like um, in it. You can taste it in between. But I mean you do want it kind of nice and cheesy, so where there's some nice cheese strings. And Michelle is asking if you happen to know how many calories is in this dish. Uh, we don't need this information. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Lee also wanted to ask if there's any additional seasonings that you're going to add, maybe black pepper or nutmeg. Yeah, just some salt and pepper. I'm actually going to try mine now. <coughs> Might need a little more salt, let's see. And be careful because it's pretty hot. I think I'm good on the salt. I'm just going to add some black pepper on it. Obviously, you add as much as you prefer. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's some nice cheese strings in there. And I mean, if you want, you can even let it let it brown a little bit, but that's not that's not needed. So once you have that, um, it's basically ready to be served. So I'm just gonna put them into a nice little skillet. And if anybody else at this time is finished with their spätzle and plating it too, I think it'd be great if before the end we could have yeah. uh, anyone who's cooking along with put their videos on and we all show them and we can take a screenshot of everybody together That's holding up awesome. their case of spätzle. Yeah, and then you're just gonna put some of your fried onions on. as much as you like. And then 
a little bit of parsley because it always looks nice. And if you want to, you can obviously also um, chop the parsley and you can sprinkle it over the whole dish. But other than that, I'm going to show you. It will look something like this. So I for sure want to see your cage pesto too. Of all. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, let's give Melissa a round of applause, first of all, for doing that amazing job teaching us how to make cake. Yeah. And I think everybody, everyone who cooked alongside that video also deserves a round of applause. That was very dedicated. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and everybody, yeah. hold up your case wow. of Spesla. They look great. Awesome. Mahlzeit. Mahlzeit. Mahlzeit, yes. Guten Appetit. Yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Yeah, Oh, Meg, wow, nice. All right, so on three, I'm going to take a screenshot. If you made your case of space, hold it up. Ready? One. Yeah, hold it up. Yep, one, two, three. Perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Any, any questions? Just Hi, I'm Meg. Yeah, any last minute questions that we, we didn't uh, present during the cooking or anything you guys want to touch on about Kaza Spätzle generally? Are you going to have more of those? We're going to have two more episodes in the series. Yes. Uh, next week, or Melissa, if you want to say what the next two episodes will be discussing or yeah, be cooking. So we have one more episode next Saturday and it will be something that you can also bring to your Thanksgiving dinner. It will be more on the sweet side, so it will be a dessert, and we're going to announce it, I think, on uh, Monday, right? Yes, you'll be getting all that information also in the follow-up yeah. email that you get on Monday. The registration will be live next week. Um, so, so I just hope I see you for it. And you're getting a lot of well dones and thank yous and bravos in the chat as well, Melissa. I know it's hard to keep up with it from the distance. I, I want to know question. how your dishes taste. Then. I have a quick question. <laughs> Melissa, that that looks kitchen? great. Hi, everyone. Melissa, is that your kitchen? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Need a big one. <laughs> I guess your husband and your dog can come come and eat now. They can, they can get both out of the cage now and come eat, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Melissa, again, for a wonderful uh, first episode of this series. Thank you, everybody, for participating and those who cooked along. Also, a special thanks. Um, yeah. And if you're available tomorrow afternoon, we have another online event called Mach Kein Theater, and it's a uh, interview slash just session with a German actor who will talk about uh, what it's like to be an actor in Germany and how you can be an actor in Germany. So that's tomorrow at 3 p.m. And the information is also on our website. And like Melissa said, next Saturday, at same time, uh, different place, different Zoom information that you'll get again when you register for the new event once it's on uh, available online. Uh, so be sure to register for that and come join us again next Saturday at 1 p.m. for the next episode. But we are so happy you all were able to join us and look out for that follow-up email that you'll be getting on Monday. But if you have any questions before then or follow-up questions that you want to address, feel free to send an email to uh, info at germaninstitute.org is how you receive the Zoom information for this event and everything. So you should have that in your inbox somewhere um, and we can forward it to Melissa. And um, yeah, if you ever have any questions about other cultural events or language classes as well, we're here for you. And uh, how can we get Melissa's book, cookbook? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah the first uh there was a giveaway for this event so the first 15 people who registered and attended we did take note of that some of the first 15 people weren't able to attend so there's a few people a little bit later on who registered who are going to get the cookbook but we will be reaching out to you if you'll be a recipient of one of our 15 uh, cookbooks, the 100 Lieblingsrezepte oder Lieblingsgerichte der Deutschen. Um, so also on Monday, just look out for an email from us. If you were one of the 15 people to receive a cookbook, we'll be asking for your address and mailing it out also next week. Um, and it's got some yummy recipes in there. Maybe Not as yummy as Melissa's Cage of Spaceful, but some good ones. And one day, Melissa <laughs> will have her own cookbook that we can promote. Yeah, uh, you are great. You were fantastic. It's the first event I see people are participating too, and you are so clear, so thorough. So perfect. Uh, I'm so happy to have participated in this uh, event. And everybody was fantastic. It was very hands on. It was a great idea. And I really appreciate uh, the get to communicate, you know, in these circumstances as limited as we have to get together. It's really reviving to be. Yeah.
with the group. Thank you. Awesome. Great so words. Glad. And Jennifer Wheeler said this is the best Kaiser Spätzle she's ever tasted. So we have wow. Uber liked her to be a Kaiser Spätzle lover. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Everybody enjoy Bye. your Saturday Bye. and we'll see you next Saturday at Bye. 1 p.m. Yes, Bye. 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 Bye.